more and more competition in the EV sedan segment with the NEO ET5, for example, challenging the VW ID7, the IONIQ 6, the Tesla Model 3, or the BMW i4. And here is Thomas Nautigefühl. We'll find out all about this vehicle. Is it their most important car now? Everything in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go here with the front. Really clean design. The headlamps, the daytime running light here is really, really slim integrated. And in this color here, it's called Aerospace Blue. 4 meters 79 or 189 inches is the length here of the ED5, so a mid size sedan. Wheels 19 or 20 inch. These here are also the bigger 20 inch. You can also get these contrasting brake calipers. And you can see this rather classic design shape here strong hip area in the rear light strip goes all the way across the vehicle very consistent design language top speed is 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles an hour and the acceleration figure here with the all-wheel drive model is four seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour in that sport plus mode so we have one electric motor in the rear and one in the front and turning indicators well in the front looks quite fancy doesn't it in the rear, a very slim integration here, and it's actually quite wide. It's better than if you think about the tiny indicators of a Tesla Model 3, for example. By the way, every ET5 not only comes with a couple of cameras on the outside, but also here with the LiDAR, the laser sensor. More colors next to our aerospace blue. Here, this is called Taxi uh, Sun Base Yellow. Or what about a brighter stratosphere blue? And finally, a star gray. That's quite fancy, isn't it? As for the battery sizes, either 75 kilowatt hours or 100 kilowatt hours. For later, they also promise a semi-solid state battery, which is even bigger. Recharging, well, that's the thing about this vehicle. So a peak of 140 or 125 kilowatt hour, depending on the size, that means 30 minutes from 10 to 80% state of charge for the small battery, even 40 minutes for the bigger battery here with DC charging. They don't have an emphasis on the quick recharging because they also have the battery swap technology. And this works with separate battery swap stations. They have already a very huge infrastructure of that in China. That is working very well. Customers at least say that. And they also want to establish that in Europe. It will be a big challenge if they can supply enough battery swap stations to make that system work. This is the key fob. It looks like, I don't know, maybe like a like a token you have, you know, somewhere. I don't know <laughs> what's reminding you about that. Then here you can see when I open the doors, they are flush door handles and then they come towards you. Did you see that? Also, you know, really comes towards you automatically like that. Interesting. And door closing sound. Well, these are frameless and they are just very rare frameless doors which sound good these do not then inside of the doors we can see the integration of the ambient lighting we'll soon all see it in tunnel soft touch materials looks like good build quality and very interesting materials being used here's some fabric and here also at the steering wheel is all vegan interior so no animals are being harmed for this interior and you can get different colors this is the gray one you can also get beige black or more like a you know like greenish note or mint they say let's get inside and there's one thing that is kind of astonishing about this vehicle and that is actually here the front seat and we know we've driven the el7 or es7 depending on the market the name is called or the bigger sedan the et7 and they were actually fine as for the seating position but here the ed5 it's a smaller model but you can maybe already see it right here for me with 189 or six foot two i mean there is headroom left to this panoramic roof but in the front i feel like I mean a tiny vehicle and it's not that tiny, you know what I mean? So this is to me the key problem of this vehicle. If you are tall, you feel caged in here in the front. Yeah, but besides that, the seat itself is not bad at all. Interior cockpit overview consisting of 12.8 vertical screen and 10.2 inch digital instruments. And you either get the Nomi Halo, that's like a more flat integration, or here the Nomi Mate with this ball with eyes and then you can say hey Nomi hey Nomi hey how are you doing thanks for asking everything is great here yes okay thing is the basic layout of the vehicle especially here on the interior it does remind you of Tesla 
last time we had some discussions with it and people said like yeah just because it's a vertical screen it's not tesla but everyone who gets in this vehicle says oh that's like tesla and to me this is a sign you know that they look towards tesla which is no wonder because they went forward with electric vehicles and then everyone else followed and you have a lot of other manufacturers that have also copied the things and here it is well done all the materials everything how is you know the build quality on the interior how it feels and looks everything is very well done and organized personally i like more physical buttons and also to adjust the steering wheel for example the separate column and the climate unit but that counts for all manufacturers and all recent things we have seen futuristic controls of the window levers this is by the way up and this is down I would have made it maybe the other way around. And the door opens here. The digital instruments, clean, easy, very good to read. Here it says showroom mode, but when we take this car on the open road, of course, there's the proper mode available. Middle console here, this is the mode for the drive mode selection while driving, inductive charging pad. Then here, so cup holders are somewhat adaptive and this middle armrest here, you can actually fold to both sides and there's more space underneath. Infotainment system, the climate unit is always here in the lower part. This is the home screen with the GPS. It's actually quite responsive, does a good job. Then these are the controls and the adjustment for the steering wheel is also then the same way like Tesla does it. Nomi can also be activated or deactivated in some way. So depending on how you prefer it, rear seating area, let's try. So the leg room is actually fine, but I can't move my feet under the seat properly. It needs to be higher, but that's a problem because it's already that high for the front driver. Hmm. Yeah, so that's not ideal indeed. And also here the angle of my legs. Headroom does work with this panoramic roof. So overall it works for five tall adults more or less, but not ideal indeed. And this panoramic roof here, by the way, is a fixed one also without a cover. Trunk or boot, 390 liters. You see here a separate sedan opening. The width here is a meter of 40 inches, so good dimension indeed. And the length also about a meter or 40 inches. You're just, of course, always limited in the height in this concept here with 50 centimeters or 20 inches. Comparable to the Ionic 6, I would say, the ID7, for example, has the advantage that it has this fast big opening, just opens wider. The Model 3, of course, more or less the same here as well. But it has a little bit more space as for the depth. Is there a frunk? Actually, no. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the Neo ET5, this mid-size sedan. And we start here with some city traffic, because this will also be a quite frequent use case. Well, it feels like a small vehicle indeed, but not only on the positive side, because here in the front, told you in the interior part as well, I feel like driving a tiny vehicle. I mean, I feel like I'm almost sitting on the hood because the seat doesn't go lower. So for tall drivers, not ideal. There in the bigger sedan, brother model, the ET7, I definitely felt more at home. You know, I can already set the cruise control in this inner city motorway, so to speak. And then also here the lanes being kept. You can see here, pretty smooth. So the assistance systems so far work very well indeed. We also have a blind spot monitor. You can see that the side mirror is flashing. So everything covered as for that. That's also the thing about this vehicle. You buy it and have some options and then everything is immediately covered, basically. The steering feel is actually quite good. So I have a feeling for everything. I have deactivated a lot of the assistance systems already, like, you know, like the beeping and Nomi and stuff. And, but still, even if you de deactivate some stuff, this car is always beeping, beeping, blinging, blip, 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 somewhere. So um, yeah, I can just recommend to set it up thoroughly once and try to deactivate most of the stuff. This will help. Um, <laughs> yeah, you hear that? Also when you hear activate the cruise control, Beep, beep, beep. You can almost play music with that. Yeah, I think um, they have, for the European market, already drawn back some of the stuff. And I think some work there still has to be done. But the overall hardware feeling of the vehicle is actually quite good. 
I feel also from the layout, from the driving and so on, yes, definitely a competitor to the Tesla Model 3. This one here, however, more expensive than told you earlier, we have the competitors of Hyundai Ioniq 6, the VW ID7, BMW i4, maybe two. And the thing is, size-wise, I feel it comes close to the Tesla Model 3, especially here in the front cockpit and so on. Seating comfort-wise, also, there I feel that especially the VW ID7 is better as for the seating comfort, the Ioniq 6 a little bit more, and the BMW i4 actually is also better, a little bit in the seating comfort. Um, but this one here, definitely good now as for the range. We're driving the one with 100 kilowatt hours battery, so the bigger battery that's uh, available at this moment. And indeed, it is quite efficient. So we could score so far on our test drives here today some 20 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers. Um, and that leads to a real world range in good temperatures as we have today, very mild temperatures of around 500 kilometers or 300 miles. In winter times, it more goes into 400 kilometers or 250 miles. Uh, but overall, it's actually something you can very well live with. And here once again, left and right, I have very good feeling for the car. It feels kind of sporty indeed. Because it's so tiny in the front, that feeling, it almost feels like you would be driving a small uh, go-kart or something, you know? So a very interesting driving feeling. Yeah, check out this in the corner. Yeah, it feels really planted and at the same time the suspension is actually more comfortable than in the Tesla Model 3. The VW ID7 is also really good from the suspension. They also offer an adaptive suspension. So in that respect also the ID7 is, uh, is better, I feel. But I think although we have the very heavy big battery here, it feels surprisingly light. Yeah, when I exceed the speed limit, there's also this warning. There is a new regulation that when you have new vehicles now that you put the registration to, do the homologation, you have to have this speed warning by law, at least in the EU. Yeah, that's something I, I really don't like about new cars, that so many new regulations are there. On one hand, they can be helpful. On the other hand, they can just be annoying even when exceed the speed by one kilometer or something. And then the question is, how do you integrate that? How often this beeping comes, how intensive, how loud it is and so on. And here, it's still in comparison to other vehicles I've experienced quite annoying. You can deactivate these beeps, but then regulation is that as soon as you restart the vehicle, it's on again. Then let's go to sport plus mode and wait for that green traffic light because there's a speed camera and maybe they take a nice shot of us. <laughs> that was zero to 60 kilometers an hour acceleration. Well, and 60 kilometers was the speed limit, so obviously the speed camera also did not intervene. Yeah, sometimes you have to take some risks. Just for you, of course. <laughs> yeah, not risk as for safety. A clear way here. Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun, so wow. So the official figure is four seconds to one kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour in the Sport Plus mode. And the good thing is, that's really transparent feature here. They tell you when you have which acceleration feature here in Sport mode, 5.9, in the Sport Plus mode, four seconds. And then you know what to expect, actually. We have a lot of other electric vehicles that have Sport mode and the throttle input changes but then the peak power stays the same and you have the same acceleration when you pin it down. But here, obviously, they followed a different strategy. So here in the sport mode, it's really, really aggressive on the throttle. Most of the time you leave it in the comfort mode and you still have a lot of power then. As for the recuperation, it does decelerate. And then the last bit maybe you, you do with your brakes. So I wouldn't say it's not a one pedal driving feeling as we know from Tesla but maybe something in between Tesla and some other EV manufacturers. Stay focused. I thought I turned off Nomi. It even says it's muted. Hmm. <laughs> well, you have two possibilities. This Nomi Mate 
but the standard for this vehicle would be the Nomi Halo, then you still have some voice functions and so on, but you don't have this Nomi face. And I think I would get rid of the Nomi face as soon as possible. <laughs> well, and more acceleration from 100 kilometers an hour. 150. Now it's slowing down. 180. Pretty quick. 190. And 200 top speed. 200 kilometers an hour. 125 miles an hour. Yeah, when we have German Autobahn, then we need to show you this. It was fitting very well. It was also still quite silent indeed. So noise installation really good. So we were just driving the BMW 7 series yesterday at an equal speed and wasn't too much side, too much more silent or something. So, wow, I'm, I'm really surprised how silent this one is at really high speeds. Wow, I, I, I really don't have to raise my voice that much. That is well done. So you really feel that the hardware of the vehicle is really, really good. Wow, pretty impressed by the high speed performance. I mean, they're clearly not building the cars intentionally for high speed and here lane change. It's also quite strong steering feel now, so we hardly have that nowadays. Yeah, really surprised how much feedback it, it delivers. It feels very planted also on the road here, even at high speeds. And that's of course always the good test. They say when you can make it on the German Autobahn, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Don't they say that about New York? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, of course, uh, you know, as for vehicles and so on, that's why we also do the German motorway test and always. But that's really nice. Also, here the lane change here, like this, at higher speeds. It doesn't shake up or something. At the same time, the suspension is not uncomfortable. So, yeah, it's a very, very good driving behavior indeed. And the efficiency is also there. So my biggest criticism point in driving remains the space here in the front as for the driver. That's a critical, critical thing, definitely. Um, so as a tall person, you don't feel so much at home than here in the front driver's seat. Here in the tunnel, by the way, we can see something of the ambient lighting right there. It's a very nice integration, not too visible, but I think it's a subtle integration. And one thing we have experienced now, noise-wise, stick with the point that the wind insulation and so on is really good but at some point we had some noise that was appearing when we were not filming on camera like a noise from the middle console or something and I think it was related to a higher speed driving as well but it was appearing and then disappearing again not sure what that was yeah can't replicate it actually but it was kind of annoying so de definitely we have to mention that Pricing is somewhat 60,000 euros for the 75 kilowatt hour battery and around 70,000 euros for the 100 kilowatt hour battery if you buy the battery. This is a competitive pricing in the premium segment. The good thing for the customer is that options wise you don't have to pick so much. Everything is always included basically. They also have the strategy that you lease the battery, then there's a lower entry price, but then you have a monthly lease and then you can also use the battery swap. If you're more interested in the Neo brand, we also have the EL7 review and the bigger sedan brother, the ET7.